In this episode, I wanna take you through a really inexpensive way to get live streaming with a single camera. Now in my previous video over here, I made a multi-camera uh, setup where you have to have you know, three different cameras and all these different devices and things can get pretty expensive. But for this video, I wanna just take it right back to basics and just go for a one camera uh, setup. You can buy these, uh, this equipment under 600 pounds for this particular setup. Things will vary if you go for a cheaper camera, cheaper um, connection device. So at least 600 pounds. I think this one's about five, four, five. Um, but you can bring that price down. So I just wanna take you through what I use. Now this does not include the price of a laptop. That's the first thing you're gonna need. You can use a Mac or PC. Um, you can check out the specs on some of the software so you know roughly what kind of Mac or PC to buy. But for this purposes, I'll just be using my Mac. So I'm not gonna include that because I'm kind of assuming that you already have one of those. Um, so that's the, the first thing you get a, a laptop to plug these things into. Um, next up, I'm gonna talk about the camera. So for this setup, a really cheap option is to go for a GoPro. Here I have the uh, GoPro Hero 5. What's cool about this setup is that you can also use the uh, Hero 4 or Hero 3. And these are still available. You can buy them on eBay, used or new. And they're pretty cheap. So that's a way of bringing in the price of this whole setup. The Hero 5, for example, it costs around 360 pounds to buy new, which is not a whole lot of money. But like I say, if that's a little bit too much, then look into the Hero 4 or the Hero 3 and you can get nice results out of those two. So that's the camera I'm gonna use for the setup. And the next step is bringing the camera's signal into your laptop. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. On the computer here, I have a few options that you, you can use. Uh, I'm on the Epifan video website here and I'm looking at the av.io HD version. And what this basically is, is a way of taking a HDMI connection. Here you can see a little example of what they're talking about. HDMI, DVI, or VGA, you bring those into the device and then you plug that in via USB. That's one option. Slightly less expensive option might be this USB capture card or capture device by uh, Magewell or, yeah, Magewell. And basically that, that just lets you bring in a HDMI connection. You can see it here, HDMI comes in this side and you plug it into your computer via USB. Uh, that's really nice, uh, those are really nice options for uh, any Windows users out there. In my case, I can also use those for the Mac, but the one I'm using today is something I already have here, so I'm gonna show that. And that is the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder from Blackmagic Design. What this lets you do is bring in a HDMI or even an SDI connection, this sort of more professional connection, um, into your computer via a Thunderbolt cable. So in terms of pricing for these two things, the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder and you can find links to all these below the video. This will cost around 145 pounds, and the cable, the Thunderbolt cable is not cheap, but it costs about 35 pounds, uh, give or take if you can find one a bit cheaper. So that's a way of getting the, uh, the GoPro signal through the, the, uh, the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder into your computer. The next thing you're gonna need for the connection purposes will be a HDMI cable. This is a full-size HDMI cable, which will plug in here to the mini recorder. And on this side, you have the uh, micro connection, which will plug into the GoPro. You can pick these up. This is an Amazon Basics one. It only costs about five pounds. So that's pretty inexpensive. And uh, that's basically the, the, the way of getting your camera through a HDMI cable into the mini recorder through a Thunderbolt cable into your laptop. That's the main connection points. I also have these headphones here because I'm gonna get to that in a minute. minute but that's all about the audio for the this, uh, for this setup. But we'll get there in, in just a minute. You probably already have a pair of those lying around. If you don't, something similar will work just, just fine. So I think the next thing to do is to set these things up and take you through uh, what you need to do. Um, over on the computer, I just wanna show you the software that you, you can use for this. If you wanna go for the free option, OBS is, um, is a great solution. Uh, let's take a look at the website. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software, and it is a free and open source software for recording and live streaming. Download it, it's available for, you can see here, for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And you just download that and you can use it to stream or to record your, uh, your stuff, which is pretty cool. You don't have to pay anything. I personally like to use Wirecast, which is a paid solution, but I wanna keep this, this uh, budget friendly, so I went for that 
free OBS software. So let's set these things up. Um, I'm just gonna bring in the included little GoPro uh, housing, just so I can pop it on a tripod. It'll be a bit easier for me in a minute. And then we can just close that over and throw it on a tripod. Now, I wanted to keep the, the uh, equipment list short. This is a Manfrotto Pixie Mini tripod, but you might not need a tripod. You might be able to set up your GoPro somewhere that works for you. I'm not gonna include that in the budget because that's just what I wanna use right now to set it over here and not have to hold it the whole time. So I'll set that down there. And uh, I'll take the HDMI cable and simply plug it into the uh, GoPro and then plug the other end, it's gonna get messy here, plug the other end into the mini recorder. There we go. I do have a video on the uh, mini recorders on how to use them, how to make sure your settings are right. Uh, you can watch that up here and then just come on back to this one if you have any problems with the mini recorder. So I've got my mini recorder and my GoPro connected together. Then I can use the Thunderbolt cable to plug in the, uh, the mini recorder to the laptop. What's nice about these devices is you, you just install a little bit of software, set it up, and uh, things are good to go. So I'm gonna turn on the uh, GoPro. And uh, that'll just launch and start up. And I can see that it is in, um, in the right mode now. If I can just get that right for you. There you go. You can see on the screen that it's uh, sending the signal over that HDMI connection. And if we head over to the computer, I can open up OBS. I have it open here. Um, if you've never used OBS before, it can be a little bit, uh, not difficult, but just it take you a little bit of time to maybe get your head around it. So just take some time and play with it. Um, basically what you do, if you wanna just get started really quickly, I would jump into the preferences. And a good thing to start with is the video preferences. And I've just set that to 1920 by 1080. That's the signal. Uh, the resolution we're going to go with today so let's click OK on that and then create a new scene I'm going to call this uh, show and tell and then within that on the sources section I'll just click a new source here you can see Blackmagic device in this case like I said I'm using the Ultra Studio mini recorder from Blackmagic so I can just click on that Blackmagic device I will call this uh, Ultra Studio 1, just in case I add some more later, and OK that. Then it'll pop up this little properties window for that device. And here I can click on device, and there you go, you can see that the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder has shown up within the computer. I'll just turn the camera around so you can see me whenever it comes on. And I have to just set a few uh, things here, like the mode, the mode is 1080p25, if I am correct. And there I, there I go, you can see me coming in there, hello. Um, if you find that this doesn't work for you, my particular GoPro is set up for 1080p at 50 frames. And this is what's being uh, like sent out over the HDMI. If you find that you click on 1080p or 1080p25 and it doesn't work, then just click around a few more options. Um, and I bet that it'll show up in there. And I can just say OK for that. So now I can see that that shot is working within the um, OBS. It's a little bit laggy, but that's just because of my computer's doing a lot of work. I can uh, use the cut button to set that live. And there you can see that, like I said, if you haven't used OBS before, this might be a bit confusing, but you basically have a preview side over here and a program side over here to the uh, right. And whatever's on the right is on program that's going out live um, whenever the time comes to start streaming or start recording. So we've got our video working. And the next thing we wanna do is get some good clean audio. Now you could use the GoPro's audio, but I personally wouldn't recommend that. You might wanna put it over in the corner of the room and uh, to talk to the camera, it's very far away. So I wouldn't recommend that. That's why I think these uh, Apple uh, ear pods are a really good solution. They've got a microphone built in and you can plug them straight into your computer. I will do that now. And then I could just wear them during the show and I can hear certain things. I'll just put in one ear maybe, just so I can hear uh, what's happening or just so that the microphone is nice and close to my face. So if I go into OBS, I can show you how to make that happen. 
In this little mixer section here, you can actually see the uh, Ultra Studio One audio is bouncing. And that's coming from the GoPro. That's the audio being piped through there. But what I can do is turn that right down. And then I can turn up. Actually, let's just go into the mixer settings here. So that's the Ultra Studio. I just turned it right down. That's why the volume's at zero. And what I'll do here is the microphone, I'll put that up to 100. And what I can see now instead is that the microphone is bringing in the audio instead of it coming through the GoPro. I can turn on monitor and I can hear myself talking in my uh, headphones. I'll just turn it off again because it's very difficult to uh, listen to yourself back at a slight delay. But then I can just confirm that it's working and I can do a quick audio, one, two, that might be a little bit loud. Let's just crank that down a little, somewhere around there, one, one, two. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so I can see that the audio is coming in through my headphones instead of coming in through the, uh, the GoPro, which is cool. And that is the audio section. I'll just take this out now and put it on the table, but you could just attach it to somewhere right here if you want it, or keep it in your ear if you want to um, listen back to what you're up to. Um, and I think the next thing to do is to actually just show you how to go live in the OBS preferences. Bring that up and go to the stream section. And in here, we want to select custom streaming server. You can use the uh, streaming services, but I like to just go for the streaming server, um, just so you know how that works. And then I'll head over to my browser. And then here I am in YouTube's live event section. So you can just use the go live now feature if you prefer, but I want to do a scheduled event. So I'll click on schedule of a new event and it'll bring up some options for me. I can give it a title. This is called a show and tell test. I'm gonna go live today at 12 p.m. my time. Unlisted because this is just a nice test event. And I'll create that event. Give it a few seconds while it saves that uh, those changes. And it'll bring up this nice little uh, option setting here. What I like to go for is add a new thumbnail. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now. Choose a bit rate. For me, I can run a pretty nice 1080p stream, so I'll select that. And here it's given me some nice options, stream name and the primary server URL. So I'll copy and paste the stream name over to OBS. That's what this called stream key in OBS. So I'll paste that in there. And then I'll take the primary server URL and paste that in there and click OK. And what I can do now is I can start streaming. So I'll click the start streaming button down here. It'll give it a few seconds and then it'll, it'll go live. There's some nice stats at the bottom of OBS just to give you a general idea of what, um, what you can expect. So I'm not dropping any frames right now. I've been live for 11, well, a few seconds and some CPU usage. If I head back over to the YouTube settings, I'm not technically live just yet. That's just sending some uh, video data to YouTube. If I save those settings and I go into the live control room up here at the top, YouTube will tell me what the stream status is like. So there I can see it's getting data and it's, it's coming in good because I started that stream um, over on OBS and because things are already being pushed to YouTube, I can see that I have a good, nice stream status. If you see something that isn't so good, it'll tell you what you need to do in terms of lower the quality of your stream. Maybe your internet's not fast enough, but for now, this is good for me. So I can click on the preview, click OK, and then YouTube will just prepare the stream. It'll take a few seconds, and this is just generating a preview so I can watch and make sure that the information is going through OK. And now that that is, uh, in preview stages, I can actually click on the preview and hopefully in a few seconds, I will see myself coming through. Oh, nice, we've got a nice advert to sit through. I should probably have turned that off, but skip that. And you can see me chatting. There's probably around a 20 second delay on the YouTube streaming, maybe a little bit more. So I can see myself talking uh, a few seconds ago and see me talking to the GoPro and chatting to you. And now I can see that the test is working okay. I could pop in my headphones and listen to myself talking just to make sure that that's working okay. And it is, I can hear myself talking about whatever I talked about 30 seconds ago. Then I'll head up back to the top again and I can start streaming.
Simple as that. I'll click OK. And what YouTube will do is set that stream uh, actually live to the public. Um, I set it as unlisted earlier, but you could now go into your YouTube settings and change that to public. You can share the link around. You can do all that cool stuff. Here you can see now I'm actually live on YouTube for the last 10, 12 seconds. So this is the actual real life live stream here. Um, I can click on this view and watch page and I'll just open that in a new tab, jump in there. It's not usually recommended to watch the, the stream back again on the same computer because you might be affecting the overall performance of your computer, but for this test, it's okay. There you go, you can see me actually chatting. Um, there's somebody watching now, that's probably me. You can join in the, uh, the chat room over here and you can see that that's as simple as that to get things live. I will put a link to this uh, test live stream in the description so you can see the quality. I'm gonna to talk to you instead, GoPro, um, for a little while. If you're watching this test stream, then thanks for checking it out. Um, and there's a link up there to the test stream as well if you wanna watch that. But that's getting live with uh, YouTube. I think I'll just stop this now in the background. And uh, I think I'm just gonna show you how to do the same with Facebook in case that's something that you actually want to do. At the end of your stream, you'll click on stop streaming at the bottom there. Or you can do, in YouTube first actually, stop streaming over here and click OK. And that will just end the stream. You can see there I've been streaming for one minute and 13 seconds. And uh, that's the stream closed. That video will process and be available after the fact so people can watch it on demand if they want to. So there's a few things to keep in mind for this kind of setup. It is an inexpensive one, so the quality might not be as amazing as uh, some professional cameras you could use out there. But I think GoPros are pretty pretty good quality for this kind of work. I could set this up. Um, I could set up a few of these if I wanted, or just this one. You can plug it in by uh, the USB power and it'll just stay on all day. So you can live stream for you know 24 hours if you want to. Um, another thing to consider is the, the laptop. You can hear that in the background of this video as well. So um, it's, it's gonna be something that you just have to cope with. If it's doing a lot of work, the fans are gonna come on. If you can get away from your laptop, then that's even better. You don't have to listen to the fan in the background, which would be nice. Another thing you can do is just to, um, if I head back over to OBS, Whenever you're streaming, see, I'm still streaming to Facebook there. Um, I can also start recording and that will record a nice, good quality local version of the video file as well. So if I want to come in later and edit that, I can do that. So you can record and stream at the same time, which is pretty nice. I'll just stop for these now. Stop recording and stop streaming. You may also want to experiment with different ways of bringing in audio. So I'm using these nice little Apple uh, headset here or headphones which I think sounds great, sounds a lot better than the GoPro's um, built-in microphone for this kind of purposes. But you could grab a USB microphone, uh, you could also use a whole host of different ways of bringing in audio. But um, starting with something simple like this and then learning from it and, and deciding what you actually need makes more sense. Instead of going out there and buying a brand new microphone, why don't you just try out what you have and then see if it works. If it doesn't, just pick up something else. So I hope, I really hope you find that useful. Um, I really wanted to make this budget-friendly uh, version. I think the total cost came in at yeah, 545 pounds for all these pieces. But like I said, you can always bring down that price a little if you want to use a different GoPro, if you want to use some of the other um, interface devices, and that price can shrink. But I think it's not a bad investment for going live. And as you can see, it's simple to go live once you get a few bits and pieces. Uh, let me know if you find this useful. If you're looking for something that's a little more multi-cam complex uh, switching setup, then you can check out that video up there, um, which will let you, you know, bring in a few different camera sources, edit between them. But for this one, this might be nice if you just want to do a quick little set, uh, go live and just have a little chat with your Facebook or YouTube audience about what's on your mind that day. You don't need to get very fancy with it. It's a little step above um, going live on your phone, I think, because you have a little more flexibility about what camera you use and what audio source you have, but um, it's it's inexpensive and I think it'll work pretty well for you if this is the kind of thing you want. If you do have any questions, there's a link below to our Facebook um, Messenger. So if you do have any questions and you're not sure, you can either leave them in the comments of this video or you can talk to me directly over on Facebook Messenger. You'll find that link below. Thank you for watching. I'll check you, I'll see you in the next episode of Here Records Show and Tell and uh, have a good week. Bye-bye.